Dear Jonathan Steele, ex chief foreign correspondent of the Guardian newspaper, thanks for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Thank you. So let's start with what was recently announced the international initiative Defend Kurdistan Against the Turkish Occupation has been established in response to the Turkish government's ongoing uh, prosecution of the Kurds in Turkey. The occupation of the Kurdish area of the northern Syria and the military incursions into the Kurdistan region of Iraq. What are your thoughts on this initiative and the uh, notion that uh, the Turkish state uh, represents a treat to Kurds in all of Kurdistan? Well, I think it's a tremendously good initiative that so many journalists, academics, media celebra celebrities, politicians, members of parliament and so on have come together to denounce what Turkey is doing both in Syria and in northern Iraq. I mean, it's important that this issue is publicized widely, that more people know about it, and what better than to have leading figures from the political world, or the academic world, and the media world to bring it, the news to people and to go through the area and to try and find out exactly what is happening there. So I really applaud this initiative. Thank you. So secondly, uh, the Turkish government has also recently escalated its attacks against the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, the HDP, as you know. With the ongoing Kobane trial against HDP members, including the former party co-chair, as well as the Turkish government's attempt to officially ban the HDP. What do you make of these developments and why do you think there has been so much silence about the issue in the international media? Well, I think it's an absolute disgrace and an outrage that Turkey is trying to shut down one of the major political parties, the third largest political party in Turkey, which represents more than 6 million voters and has something like 55 members of the Turkish parliament. How can you ban a party like that? I mean, it, it's complete fabrication of evidence against them to try and claim that they're terrorist or linked to terrorism or something of that kind. Um, but it is part of a growing authoritarian trend in Turkey. It's been going on for the last seven or eight years. And uh, since uh, Erdogan decided he wanted to be not just prime minister, but president of Turkey and changed the constitution to give extra powers to the presidency. So this is uh, part of that trend, a downward trend, I would say. And uh, it is a disgrace to have 108 members of the HDP on trial facing potential life sentences in prison if they are found guilty is, is, is terrible and the uh, shutting down of the party through the constitutional court and the prosecutor's office and so on would also be another terrible blow. Thank you. So lastly, a few days ago, 17 June, we saw an attack committed against the HDP headquarters in Izmir where an HDP member, Dennis Poiras, was murdered, which has sparked protests and outrage around the world. Members of the HDP and related organizations have stated that this attack must be viewed as an extension of the Turkish state's ongoing attack against the HDP and the Kurdish people. What are your thoughts on the attack and uh, what it indi indicates about current situation in Turkey? Well, the attack is terrible. And of course, the fact that the police were standing by doing nothing, they were surrounding the building, they didn't do anything. They didn't arrest anybody as a suspect for doing this terrible crime, this murder. And uh, it shows that the, 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 the state is in collusion with the police and whoever did the killing. And so it is a very damaging new step in the situation because uh, it's one thing to use constitutional legal means and uh, as we've just been talking about with the Kobani trial, although they're diverting and the, the, the real justice pr proceedings to twist them in the direction they wanted to go, that is bad. But to use direct violence and use gunmen and uh, t t shootings of individual members of parliament or their f families or friends is, is, is another terrible step and it would be a f 
awful escalation of the struggle in Turkey for justice if now people are going to be literally assassinated in cold blood in daylight. Dear Jonathan Steele, the ex-chief foreign correspondent of the Guardian newspaper, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your valuable comments today. Okay, well, it was a pleasure to talk to you and I was glad to be able to say what I think about this terrible... Thank you, thank you.